Dr. Bill Crawford here, psychologist, speaker, author of seven books, host of two PBS specials, here again to bring you another tip on how to help you create the life you want. Specifically, how to use my life from the top of the mind philosophy to bring more clarity, confidence, creativity into everything you do. Today I want to talk about something that I think is pretty universal, the desire to be heard and understood. You know, whether we're talking about a family member, a friend, a co-worker, or even somebody we don't really know, like, you know, a customer or a clerk somewhere, we all want what we're saying to be heard and understood. And I think it's fair to say that when we experience what we're saying not being heard or not being understood, we can get frustrated and we can get stressed, maybe even angry. And what happens then is we start pushing. We start becoming more insistent on being heard and understood. Now, for those of you who follow my life from the top of the mind philosophy, you know why this doesn't work. Because when we experience not being heard, remember this middle brain limbic system has a tendency to interpret anything negative as dangerous, and it throws us into the lower brain, the brain stem that is really responsible for fight or flight. Fight is becoming more insistent, flight is just giving up, okay, well, they're never going to hear me, whatever, and giving up. Neither one of those are effective. So what we want to do is be able to take the idea that maybe we're not being heard and understood as good information about, you know, maybe how I'm communicating. Now, we want to be careful about getting to the point where we're asking the question, okay, wait, are you saying it's my fault I'm not being heard and understood? No, it's just that if our desire is to be effective and to be heard, we want to make sure we're doing everything we can do to make that happen. The example I like to use when I'm talking with people is, hey, if you were going to another country, and you wanted them to hear and understand you, and you had this app kind of inside you, and all you had to do is push a button, and you could speak their language, you would do that in a heartbeat because you know that would help you become heard and understood. So I think the challenge is sometimes we're not speaking their language. We're not framing what we have to say in a way that they will hear as valuable. We're just saying whatever we think and becoming more and more insistent trying to get them to hear it and understand it. And have you noticed the more insistent we get, the more resistant they get. And now we're finding ourselves in this power struggle, in this kind of, uh, uh, in this struggle about who's right. So what I like to do is kind of look at, okay, if my goal is to be heard and understood and I want to maximize that potential, the first thing I want to make sure I'm doing is understanding them and what's important to them. You know, there's a reason why Stephen Covey's Seek First to Understand and Then Be Understood is so ubiquitous. Because it's so true. And it's not easy. And it's not what we're used to. Very few people in our life have gone, well, dear, let me make sure I understand your perspective before I give you mine. It's rel relatively rare. And so our tendency is to do what we've been done to or what has been done to us, where we basically just kind of say what we think. And if they don't get it, we say it more insistent or again, we give up. But if we're willing to speak their language, if we're willing to ask ourselves the question, okay, what's important to this person? And how can I frame what I have to say in a way that they will hear as valuable? And sometimes that's also about just listening to them. You know, sometimes if we want other people to listen to us, I think we've got to be willing to model that. We've got to be willing to do with them what we want them to do with us. So if we're willing to listen, and even if we don't agree, if we can see how they would see it that way and say something like, you know, I can certainly see how you'd see it that way, and, and then begin to give them our perspective, especially around the future, and especially combining what's important to them with what's important to us. A lot of times people get really stuck talking about the past. Well, you did this, or I did this, or you didn't do this, or I didn't do this. It becomes a de debate about who's right. They'll remember it one way, you'll remember it another way. I do not encourage you to try to be heard and understood if you're talking about the past. What you really want to do is create a way of connecting, moving forward, where you are hearing and understanding them, and they are hearing and understanding you. And then what's important in order to do that is to make sure you're framing some sort of agreement about the future where they see something valuable in it for them, as well as you getting what you want. That's really not as hard as it might seem. I mean, in a uh, relationship, you certainly want the relationship to be good. They do too. 
in a co-working relationship, you both want to be effective. It's going to be good for both of you. In a parenting effective, you certainly want to be influential with that person, but you also want to create kind of a, a way of going forward where the love you have for each other is part of the relationship. In a clerk, when you're talking to someone you don't know or a customer, you want them to be able to move in your direction in a way where you meet in the middle, where you both come out having gained something from the reaction. Maybe you've gained a customer, a fan, someone who will recommend you to their, their friends. They've gained something by seeing you as flexible enough to be able to adjust whatever a price or a commodity, what's going on, in a way that meets what's important to them. So the idea is, if we want to be heard and understood, what we've got to be willing to do is speak their language. And in order to speak that language, sometimes we have to know what that language is. So that's where listening comes in. There's a great quote that I use in my seminars that says, Wisdom is the reward we get for listening all those times we would have preferred to talk. See, we want to talk, we want to share things, we want to say things, we want to convince people of the righteousness of our perspective. But if they're not open to it, if they're not in the part of the brain that can hear the value of what we're saying, then us just talking and talking and talking not only won't work, it'll actually make things worse. If we're willing to listen and get that wisdom, wisdom is the reward we get. The wisdom we get is what's their language, what's important to them. Now, this has to be sincere, so we're not kind of trying to manipulate them because they'll sense that and they'll resist it. But if we are authentic in our desire to create a win-win solution, if we truly do understand them, if we have empathy for how they feel and think, don't have to necessarily agree with it, but we understand it, and if we're coming from a position that makes sense, logic, empathy, and authenticity, we have what's called the three-legged stool of trust. Because frankly, in order for someone to hear us and understand us, they've got to be willing to trust what we're saying. And in order to do that, we've got to be authentic. We've got to have uh, make sense, and they've got to know that we get it. We've got to know that they've got to know that we truly understand what's important to them. This is what I love to do. I get to go around the world teaching people how to engage others in a way where they truly hear and understand what we're trying to get them to understand and hear. If you would like me to do that with your organization, all you got to do is go to my website, BillCrawfordPhD.com, hit the contact button, let me know what you're interested in. By the way, if you're liking these videos, please hit the like button, you know how Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest, LinkedIn, all these folks love it when you like it. And I'm going to try to bring to you one of these each week. If you're not subscribed on LinkedIn or Pinterest or, or YouTube or friend me on Facebook, feel free to do that. Twitter, iTunes, I post these all around so that you can get these each week. If they're valuable, I'm having a wonderful time bringing them to you. So, until next time, here's to you. Bringing more clarity, confidence, creativity into everything you do. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.